Welcome to The Published Plot. I'm Mike. I'm Jessica. And I'm Nate. And this is a plea for Christian unity. So, coming up on Saturday is the Feast of St. Paul. And the week between, so that's Saturday, that's the 25th of January. Mm -hmm. From the 18th of January through the 25th of January is the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. And your general response is probably going to be, I don't care. Because we don't care enough about Christian unity. No, no. No, no. Conveniently, it's the same week that in America we have Martin Luther King Jr. Day. At least depending on when it's observed. Uh It's always uh observed on Monday. Yeah. And I grew up in an area that was largely a bunch of white kids. So we had to go to school that day to learn about Martin Luther King Jr. Ah. And so, therefore, it's not Martin Luther King Jr. Day Mm -hmm. until you see a picture on the internet of Mm -hmm. him walking, you know, hand in hand with a priest or some nuns (laughs) or some other, you know, people in the far end of the religious spectrum. Yeah. He, he was a Baptist minister mm-hmm. and there are tons of Catholic mm-hmm. and Orthodox and mm-hmm. Episcopals mm-hmm. and everyone who was always with him. And he, given that he was in the, you know, 1960s mm-hmm. in the South, he's a lot less anti-Catholic than some people nowadays there. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, he was very much on the forefront of the, eco- of the ecumenical movement, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which really got its start after World War II. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, make them say, great strides have been made. But, I'm just saying, you know, sure. in America, at least it kind of connects. You're like, yeah, he did the speech about, you know, all the kids playing on the hill together, no matter what their denomination. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, he had a dream. Mm-hmm. And also this week, we, of course, observed the day of prayer you know, in reparation for all the unborn who have died as a result of the horrific Roe versus Wade decision. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that is another source of Christian unity. You know, Catholics and Protestants alike recognizing the great evil of abortion. Mm-hmm. But. But you're going to, you know, do some Bible quotes about it, probably. I'm going to hit you with both Bible quotes and the catechism. Now, Ooh. are you just doing the catechism quoting the Bible? Because it does quote the Bible a lot. Yeah, I'm going to, you know, I was going to do the second Bible quote, but it's in there. So I'm going to cut down. I'm okay. combining. Okay. For, for efficiency. Okay. So what does the Bible say about Christian unity? Well, specifically what I want to look at is... Um, St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Okay. In chapter 12, Paul talks specifically about the body as an image of all believers. And specifically, he talks about how one part of the body is not like another part of the body, but it cannot then say that because it is not, it's not itself part of the body. So the situation we face is this. Is Christ divided? No. Christ is one. Is God divided? No. No. God is one. He's three, but one. Yeah. So, as the body of Christ, we can't really be divided. So the situation we have now is that there are some people who, by virtue of their baptism, are part of the body, as every Christian has been baptized in a Trinitarian formula is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But... We have some feet here who now insist that they are not part of the body. Because they're not a hand. They, 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 they therefore don't belong with the rest of the body. Precisely. We have some denominations that say, no, we're an elbow. And because you guys are feet, we don't want anything to do with you. But that's not the way it's supposed to work. Okay. Now, we can start with the Bible because our separated brethren won't necessarily recognize the authority of the Pope. Yeah. Or the Catechism of the Catholic Church. But I think when they take a look, especially at chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, then this quote from the Catechism will stir their hearts a bit more. Okay. Ooh, what but number I, is it? But it the also, Catechism is all by numbers. Absolutely. Paint by numbers. <laughs> yep. But I also... Catholic by numbers. But I, ooh, I like that. <laughs> but I also appeal to the Catechism because this is something that not enough Catholics take seriously. 
Well, it's super hard to read. You can't just read this like a novel. Well, well I mean, I mean, Christian Unity. It was yeah. <laughs> it was never intended to be read like a novel. Oh no, <laughs> it, it's it's the Catholic answer book. It, it, it's an encyclopedia. They just rather than putting everything in there alphabetically, they put it all in there by numbers. Although there is an alphabetical index in the back. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. So, I know, right? Yeah. Although I do need to get a new version with the uh, amendment on the death penalty, but that's neither here nor there. I'll just get a pen. <laughs> so, reading from subsection eight twenty. Okay. Christ bestowed unity on his church from the beginning. This unity, we believe, subsists in the Catholic Church as something she can never lose, and we hope that it will continue to increase until the end of time. Christ always gives his church the gift of unity, but the church must always pray and work to maintain, reinforce, and perfect the unity that Christ wills for her. This is why Jesus himself prayed at the hour of his passion and does not cease praying to his father for the unity of his, of his disciples, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, that they also be one in us, so that the world may know that you have sent me. The desire to recover the unity of all Christians is a gift of Christ and a call of the Holy Spirit. Of course, that's Catechism, section 820, quoting... John, chapter 17. Jesus, in one of his last statements before he goes to the cross, prays that all believers will be one so that the world will believe that the Father sent him. The Christian witness has been absolutely crippled by our divisions. Mm Mm-hmm. By the foot saying to the hand that it's not part of the same body. By all of us spending so much time fighting each other. And I'm not saying that we don't have legitimate theological disagreements. But we spend so much time fighting each other over those that why would the world believe that the Father sent the Son? A practice I've adopted over the last few months has been to pray twice a day very intentionally for Christian unity. And not in any way holding myself up as an example, I still offer this as a suggestion. Especially since I stole one of the ideas from a a Twitter account. Okay, fair enough. At 10.54, I pray for the unity of East and West. Yeah? A.M. or P.M.? Well, the Twitter account suggests doing both. I only do it at 10.54 a.m. I'm not up then. Well, then you can do it at 10.54 p.m. Okay. (laughs) Because in the year 1054, that is when the Great Schism occurred between Rome and Constantinople. Today, the Catholics and the Orthodox. So so then again, so then again at three... Let's see, 15 in military time. It would be be 3 p.m. 3.17 (laughs) Okay. Which on a 24 hour clock is 1517. <laughs> I pray for the reunification of the Western Church. You know, Catholicism and Protestantism. So I just can't remember the, the, the second sure. set of numbers. Sure, exactly. Or, or And for some reason in my brain, they were over. the number was over 60. So I'm like, would you do that as a percentage then? Mm-hmm. Well, plus it should be noted that I, I've actually set these inside a prayer app on my phone. Mm. And it doesn't allow me to be that specific. Mm. So the alarm for East-West Christian unity actually goes off at 1055. And the alarm for Catholic Protestant unity actually goes off at 315. Okay. Not... 1054 and 317. Okay. But we're in the ballpark. Yeah. So whatever form it takes, I would simply beg you to make praying for Christian unity, fasting for Christian unity, offering up other sacrifices for Christian unity, a part of your prayer life. Now, we here at the Published Plot are not the greatest examples of this because... Again, we're very proudly Catholic. We're the Popish plot, and we can't help ourselves but take pot shots at really stupid things that other Christians do. I mean, we equally take pot shots at stupid things that Catholics do. Exactly. Yeah, so absolutely. We just take. We just tend to we, do that we, in we, private, so you know. <laughs> we 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 really just take our pot shots like a sawed-off shotgun blast. We <laughs> we we point in a general direction, and we we hit. We hit people of all sorts. So, But even mm. this, we do out of love because we want everyone to be better 
Christians of whatever stripe you are. Because then you can make us better because clearly we need help. We're making pot shots at you. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so, please, in some way, make praying for Christian unity, praying for Christian unity, if I can enunciate my words, part of your prayer routine. This is something the Lord has placed on my heart, something I never expected that I would care about, but something that increasingly I view as absolutely vital for the salvation of souls and the building up of the kingdom. So please, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell to be notified when the next brilliant plot is uploaded. <laughs> Hit the like button because I said so. <laughs> yeah, make it appeal to authority. I like it. Comment below with how you, any bright ideas you have to help foster Christian unity. Maybe specific sacrifices we can offer. Hmm? Maybe take the world leaders and make them do a three-legged race. <laughs> you know, I think a sack race would solve so many of our problems. <laughs> you know, I, I would just like to say, it really doesn't matter with what you what you comment with. The, the, the commenting itself helps. So even if your comment is simply, they told me to leave a comment, we will take that. Maybe you could comment with an 80s song. It's been a while. Yeah. We, we miss those. Maybe you could rickroll us. Whatever it is. Ooh. We love comments. So please do us the kindness of leaving a comment. It'll make us feel better. And pray for Christian unity. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share, Share that, that love. love. What would be a Christian Rickroll? Yeah, you know, what would be the Christian song if you're going to, you know, use something? I, I'm as... sorry, the Rickroll song is better theology than stuff the stuff we heard on the radio. Never gonna give you up. Never, never gonna, gonna let, let you, you go. go. <laughs> no, we, okay, no.